Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to wrap up all of the books that I read in the month of July, including my Reading Rush wrap up. I ended up getting to a lot of things that last week. So the first book that I finished in the month of July was Push Out! The Criminalization of Black Girls in Schools by Monique W. Morris. It focuses on the criminalization of black girls in schools and the school to prison pipeline. Usually that's not really a discussion when we talk about the school to prison pipeline. We usually focus on boys. In this book what I found most interesting was the author interviewing one-on-one -on -one girls who are facing these kinds of policies in their schools and what that has meant to their uh, development as teenagers going into adulthood and I ended up giving it four stars. The next book that I finished was Prairie Lotus by Linda Sue Park. This is a historical fiction middle grade that looks into living in the Dakota territories during the 1860s following a mixed race girl. Um, she is half Asian and half white. She has a lot of goals and aspirations and that was lovely to see and it's about her wanting to get her education and also dressmaking and having her own business while facing the town kind of looking down on her because she is uh, of two different races. I really loved the main character in this. You really root for her and she is someone that you really want to succeed. Definitely would recommend this if you enjoy historical fiction middle grade and also if you want to diversify your main character reading. The whole point of Linda Sue Park writing this is to counteract The Little House on the Prairie, which is something that she grew up with but now sees kind of the defects of that series. So she wrote this one. I really enjoyed it. I gave that one four stars as well. The next book that I read I liked but I didn't love and that was Lost Soul Be at Peace. This is a graphic memoir by Maggie Thrash who is best known for her book Honor Girl. Um, this looks into her depression and kind of her losing ambition in her schooling and it's kind of a weird book because she starts seeing someone um, in her house and then it kind of connects into family history as well. I did like Honor Girl more but I think if you liked Honor Girl you'd really like this one as well. I just think that Maggie Thrash is not really like my favorite graphic novelist or graphic memoirist and um, I only rated this three stars. Then after that I finished Obsessed, a memoir of my life with OCD. I buddy read this with Patrice and it was a really insightful and lovely memoir from the point of view of someone dealing with OCD as a teenager. I ended up giving this book four stars. I really enjoyed the storytelling. I really felt like I was put in the shoes of the girl going through this and it just really opened up my mind to what OCD, living with OCD is like. Definitely would recommend um, and I listened to that one on audiobook through Libro FM. After that I finished what is a Girl Worth by Rachel Denhalander. I gave this four stars. If you're looking for more personal first-hand accounts um, of dealing with sexual abuse, I definitely recommend this. Um, I don't think the writing is as strong as say Chanel Miller's. I still think that this is a very important you know, document to have out there in the world when it comes to understanding the Larry Nassar scandal and case. And it's just fascinating to me to hear from her perspective as a religious woman how she sees sometimes congregations defending abusers and not really protecting the people that are, you know, being sought out as young children. She's just a really lovely person in general, someone who's kind of like an unsung hero, I think. Um, and I enjoyed learning more about her life and everything that went with putting her name out there with the Larry Nassar case. After that I finished The Only Black Girls in Town by Brandy Colbert. I never read any Brandy Colbert and I really enjoyed this. This is a contemporary middle grade book about two girls, um, one who has been living in this oceanside town in California. She loves surfing, she has two dads, and she has a surrogate mother that she's learning more about. And then there's a new girl in town who is the only other black girl in town. Um, and it's them developing a bond and talking about their experiences as well as other things having to do with family and friendship um, and standing up to people who are being bullies and mean and I really just enjoyed this. It was a really nice contemporary read. I gave this one four stars. And then after that it was the reading rush so as you can tell I didn't read a lot in the beginning of July um, but then I picked it really, I picked it up during reading rush. So the first book that I finished during the reading rush was The Cold Vanish by John Billman and this is looking into missing persons in um, national parks and other wild areas of the United States and basically the author is arguing that people go missing a lot more than you think in all of these wild 
areas and lands in the United States. Um, we're following one person specifically who's looking for their son who has been missing from Olympic National Park in Washington. This kind of went a little bit weird for me because they start talking about like using psychics and Bigfoot possibly being in control of this and cults possibly also being part of the reason why so many people go missing. It gets you in the mind frame of all of the possibilities that a parent of a missing child starts thinking, you know, like anything could have happened. I thought that the more realistic things that could actually happen were more interesting for me to learn about, like using dogs in searching of missing persons versus like searching for Bigfoot. Um, but overall, this is still a very interesting read. I ended up giving it three and a half stars. After that, I finished a book that I didn't really love all the way through and I really was expecting to love it. And that is Into the Tall Tall Grass by L'Oreal Ryan. I gave this one three stars. I think this will work for so many people. It just didn't really quite work for me. Um, this does deal and lean on magical realism so if you like those things I definitely would recommend it. I feel sometimes like kind of a bad Latina because magical realism has never really worked for me. I think I've read three books now with magical realism elements and they I just don't love them. I like my books to be more centered in real life and realistic and contemporary. So I couldn't really get past some of those bits, but also I felt like um, the main kids that we're following, I didn't really love them as much as I wanted to either. I just wanted to care a little bit more about the main group of kids too. But I really enjoyed the grandma in this and seeing kind of the history of this family. So if this was already on your TBR, I still say try to pick it up. It just wasn't exactly what I was looking for. After that, I finished something that has been on my TBR for a very long time, and that is The Arab of the Future, and this is by Riyad Satouf. This is a graphic memoir about growing up in the Middle East and in France and kind of going back and forth. The most interesting aspect of this book is definitely how he depicts his father. His father has very interesting thoughts about uh, dictators and women and just politics in general. It has a, a really dark humor twinge to it that is so uh, addictive. It's something that I just wanted to hear more about. Him seeing it as a child too makes it that much more interesting. Definitely a dark one and definitely want to pick up the next one in the series. I ended up giving this book four stars. The next one that I read is The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. This is a novel in verse that is mostly focused on um, finding drag growing up and going into university and understanding kind of your sexual identity and your, your gender identity. I wish that we had focused much more on when the main character goes to university and finds this new group of friends and finds drag um, and his drag family. I thought that that's what this book was going to be mostly about, but it really like the first 70% of the book is just his childhood, especially when he was really, really young, like six and seven years old, and then going to um, primary school. But overall, I did enjoy this. This has some really nice uh, wordplay that was lovely on audiobook. I didn't love how much pop culture references happened in this book. I just think that never really works for me personally when I read books and I kind of sometimes just wish that they were just omitted completely. After that I finished Harley Quinn and Breaking Glass. This is a young adult graphic novel that focuses on Harley Quinn. What I've loved so far about these new DC comics is how they take on social themes and subjects that are affecting our world today and, and that teens are thinking about today. And so this one has a lot to do with community activism and um, standing up against corporations. The main character's best friend's name is Ivy and she's really focused on um, saving her community from corporate greed and growing her community garden and her parents are really involved as well. I really loved how the art style looks. If you look at it, it's really gritty and it gives it that feel of what this town is like. There's pops of color when, you know, things start to go down um, and there's a lot of action happening. I enjoyed how the Joker was depicted in this book. I honestly had nothing to go off of about Harley Quinn. I've never read anything about her. Um, but yeah, I really loved what Mariko Tamaki did with the writing in this and I really loved what the illustrator Steve Pugh did. He did the Flintstone graphic novel so I was really excited to see more from him. I ended up giving this four stars. After that I finished the book to movie adaptation that I had watched the movie but not read the book and that was Holes by Lewis Sacker. After I put this on my TBR I realized that I had put it marked it as red which I probably read it when I was really young like in elementary school but I didn't remember anything about it so I was really happy rereading this. I think Lewis Sacker's humor 
really works for me. Um, I've read a few things by him and I just think it totally works with me. So it's a middle grade book focusing on these kids that are just digging holes as punishment, but really there's historical uh, things happening here. There's like a lost treasure that they're looking for and the humor really is what made it here and the characters kind of coming together and their dynamics with each other. Those are my two favorite things. Also after reading this I just had the song stuck in my head all the time. If only, if only the woodpecker sighs. The whole time I was reading it, it was stuck in my head. I ended up giving Holes four stars. And then I started but didn't quite finish during the Reading Rush Weather by Jenny Offill. I did end up giving this four stars when I finished it. It's such a weird little book that is very contemplative and thoughtful about the world that we're living in in America right now. It's full of doom and dread, which I also really enjoy. It does feel like it leans on that doom and dread in a way that is telling of our society and that's why I love it so much because it feels like it's my thoughts encapsulated and like written out. I thought that the sections after the election were incredibly sharp and witty and there's just so many quotable aspects of this. I just kept pausing what I was reading and like reading it out loud to my partner and then writing down quotes in my journal as well. So really really thoughtful. I ended up giving this four stars. After that I finished I Got a Monster, The Rise and Fall of America's Most Corrupt Police Squad. I ended up giving this three and a half stars and I listened to it mostly. Um, I read some of the ebook as well. This story is weird. It's bonkers the fact that basically this squad in the Baltimore Police Department, they were planting evidence. They were collecting money and not giving it to evidence. With their body cameras they were basically staging scenes and it's just bonkers that this actually happened and how um, okay it was for years and years before they finally went down. So it follows the people that were part of this task force um, as well as the lawyers and the victims um, of these police officers and what's happened after the fact. I felt like the first half didn't really have that much of a rhythm and I couldn't keep straight the officers. I literally had to google them and look at pictures of their faces multiple times. But the second half has more of a rhythm of them being caught and then what happened after they were caught. And I thought definitely this needed a little bit more of context of what the culture is like in the Baltimore police department with higher ups trying to coach police officers of what to say and what to do and how important numbers are to the higher ups and why that leads to these task forces kind of getting away with stuff because they're just basically falsifying numbers. Interesting, um, but I feel like it could have been done a little bit better. There's another book coming out by a Baltimore Sun reporter about the same incident, so I put that one on my TBR and we'll see when it comes out if it's any better. So that is it for my wrap up. That was actually kind of easy. I hope that you got enough information about each of these books to see if they're interesting to you. If not, definitely we can chat in the comments. Thank you so much for watching my video and I will see you in my next one. Bye bye!